Hello, everybody. Today, I've got a pair of old Allen Edmonds shoes here, and we're gonna go back in the Wayback Machine because these shoes are at least 56 years old. I'm gonna talk about the shoe a little bit, um, show you some features on it, as well as show you how I know it's at least uh, 56 years old. This shoe was produced 1962 or earlier. Okay, let's go. Everybody's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Got a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is, though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. They're both done. Doesn't it look awesome? Okay, so what I've got here today is a pair of Allen Edmonds shoes. Um, and this would be considered a moccasin toe. Uh, oh, and you also would call it a split toe. Because you see there, it's got the, you know, split toe on it. And you can see here this feature here it's called a moccasin toe okay it's kind of reminiscent of a moccasin single oak sole you know regular thickness sole with the storm welt you see how that lip is kind of turned up um and i'm going to talk more about this heel in a little bit here okay i do believe this is the original allen edmonds sole and heel um and these i'm not sure if you can really tell but those are not metal okay this is a metal cleat, which if you've seen a couple of my recent videos, I just did one on a pair of new 35-year-old Sears brand shoes. Um, uh, floor shimes, this was kind of common. Uh, I would say 1950s, 60s, into the 70s, and even into the early 80s, putting a metal cleat, a lot of different brands did this to uh, limit the wear. And let me show you the inside here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, you can see that old style script. I'll put a link below in the description. I have a video called uh, Dating Allen Edmonds Shoes, but uh, based on the different logos and fonts and styles and things. Um, this shoe was produced in 1962 or earlier, and I'll, and I'll prove it here in a few minutes, okay? Now, it's not in perfect condition. I haven't touched them yet, but it's not bad for 56 years old, right? Look at the stitch density, how many stitches per inch there are, right? Uh, you know, the uh, Allen Edmonds produced in the 80s or earlier, that was, that was really common. Um, but let me talk about for a second, what was going on in the United States? What was the United States like in 1962? So I pulled some data off of, off of a Wikipedia here. So January of 1962, the United States Navy SEALs, you know, we all have heard of them. A Navy, Navy SEAL Team 1 is commissioned by the Pacific Fleet and Steel, SEAL Team 2 in the Atlantic Fleet for the first time in 1962. Uh, the Beatles audition for Decca Records but are rejected. Uh, January 3rd, Pope John the 23rd excommunicates Fidel Castro. Uh, February 4th, the Sunday Times in the UK become the first paper to print a color supplement. Wow. Okay. The inaugural 24 hours of Daytona sports car endurance races run. Uh, let's see. John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth three times in four hours and 55 minutes on February 20th. Uh, the SS Kresge Company opens its first Kmart discount store in Michigan. Bob Dylan's debut album is released in the United States. He was 21 years old. The first Taco Bell fast food restaurant chain was founded by Glenn Bell in Downey, California. The first Walmart store, at this time known as Walmart with a dash in between them, opens for business in Arkansas. Uh, also in March, Marilyn Monroe is found dead. Uh, from an overdose of sleeping pills and chloral hydrate at her home in Brentwood, Los Angeles. September 12th, uh, President Kennedy speaks. Uh, no, let's skip that one. Uh, oh, September 23rd, the animated sitcom The Jetsons premieres on ABC in the U.S. for the first time. Sonny Liston knocks out Floyd Patterson, a boxing, two minutes into the first round. Johnny Carson takes over as a uh, permanent host of NBC's The Tonight Show in the U.S., you know, a post that he will hold for 30 years. The Beatles' first single in their own right, Love Me Do, uh, P.S. I Love You, is released in the UK. And uh, Dr. No, the first James Bond film, premieres in London. And the uh, whole Cuban Missile Crisis uh, in October with John F. Kennedy in Cuba. Uh, Google that if you don't know what I mean. Uh, that also occurred in that year. So that's kind of what was going on um, you know, in the world at that time kind of interesting so when i picked these shoes up by the way i really didn't think they were all that special you know i just saw that they're a nicer pair of 
you know, split toe derbies, Allen Edmonds. Uh, they looked like to me they had the original soles. I was a little bit confused though because all the other Allen Edmonds shoes I've seen have Allen Edmonds printed on the sole. So I, then I thought, well, maybe, you know, the sole has been replaced, but look at this job on the heel here. It just looked, I, I mean, I don't mean to put anybody down, but most of the time I've seen that cobblers don't take that time. Now, I don't mean that as a knock to cobblers because there's some amazing ones out there, but you know, when you just go by the volume, you know, uh, the sh things that you're going to pick up at a thrift store, you know, generally you're not going to get the top notch quality stuff. You know, you're getting stuff that people throw away. And it just was like, you know, look how perfectly those, and at first I thought they were nails. I don't know if you can tell. I don't know what they're made of, but I scratched it with an awl. Those are not brass. I think those are actually wood pegs. Um, and it's hard to see, maybe impossible to see here, but um, if you can see inside, I'll try to get you to see it. On that logo, it says Allen Edmonds, and then under that it says Nailless, okay, N-A-I-L-E-S-S, -S, uh, heel cushioned. Okay, Nailless heeled cushioned. Now, um, also I'm gonna show you, so that's a, a key to the date of these shoes. Here's the information. I believe there is no date code. So 12D, that, you know, they fit me. They're a little snug, but they fit me. Um, and I believe uh, uh, 4315 is the model number. And then usually the date code would be after comb combination, which isn't there. So I think that number there is uh, on top above combination is, um, you know, like model production, um, you know, type of information. But it's almost all the way worn off. But can you see the logo there? I know you can't see the whole thing, but you can definitely see the style of it. It's a definitely a scripted style, okay? It's like in cursive, even though, like I said, that tag is almost all the way worn off, okay? It's definitely in cursive. So um, I'll put a link to another video that I've done uh, called Dating Alan Edmonds Shoes. Um, and also, if you want the document, the PDF document that I created, feel free, uh, you know, to email me. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll send you a copy of that document that I made, okay? Um, just for, you know, own personal use, right? Um, but based on the logos, okay, based on the logos, uh, that style of logo and the fact that this has the Allen Edmonds the way that logo is written, um, this shoe is between the earliest Allen Edmonds catalogs that I could find when doing that video. It was 1956, so 1956 is my starting point for the date just because I couldn't find any Allen Edmonds catalogs previous to that. But those keys make the shoe produced between 1956 to 1962 because in 1963 they changed their logo. They quit using that scripted logo um, and they actually started using all capitals logo. Okay, so let me show you some of the things here. So let me start with um, some of the older catalog copies that I have here. So here is a copy of the 1956 Allen Edmonds catalog, okay? So the 1956 catalog, you can see that shoe, the split toe. Now here's something that I want you to notice. It's hard to see maybe uh, um, on this printed copy, but you see right here the way that line of stitching is. What I'm referring to on the real shoe is this right here. It's this line of stitching is parallel to the eye stay, okay? It's like a hockey stick there, okay? Up, over, it's perfectly parallel. And that matches this 1956 style. Can you see that? Okay. By the way, it also says, a moccasin, uh, character seldom found in uh, a custom style pattern. Moccasin style pattern is hand sewn for fine detailing made from selected skins of black leather calf fine highland tan or briar tan custom calf full leather linings have a heavy sole leather heel leather heel okay so 1956 1958 uh, we see the same thing true character da 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 leather heel okay which this has that full leather heel um, if we go to 1960 61 catalog then here we basically see uh, the same thing and it says heavy sole a reverse welt leather heel. So we're seeing the same thing. And I don't know if you can really tell, but it shows that exact same hockey stick style. Okay. So 63, same thing, leather heel, but here's the key. So here's the 63. I know it's hard to see on this, but you know, when you zoom in on the computer, you can see it's got that same style, but look what happens in 1965. Okay. I'll show another picture of it to make it more clear. 
Do you see that line? That stitching is no longer parallel. That hockey stick shape is gone, okay? Um, let me show you here. This is a little more clear on the 1971 catalog. Do you see that shape? That hockey stick pattern is definitely, definitely gone. And all the later models, even though all of these models, here it is, uh, 1975. Again, that hockey stick pattern has disappeared. And uh, I think I even went up to like about 1980. Yep, here it is in the bottom, 1980. All of them have the same model number, 4315, black calf. Okay, can you see that? So what that tells me is they changed the actual design of the Brentwood shoe either in 1963, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in 1964 or 1965, okay? So that's why I picked 1962 as the year. So this shoe, I guess technically it could be a 1964 shoe. It could be, couldn't find a 64 catalog, okay? So that's like I'm saying, it is a minimum of 55 years old. Like, how cool is that, right? So, um... It's not perfect. The uppers are in really good condition for the most part. And again, I have not done anything. I haven't polished them or anything. You can see there, there's a nick, right? It's, um, it's a tiny little, you know, just a surface, surface cut. I think that's actually damage. I don't think that's from drying out and cracking. They feel like, you know, just the, the shoes feel just like they were, you know, made five or 10 years ago or something. I showed you, um, you know, I think that's partially from the threads drying, dry rotting out, um, you know, that emblem has rotted because the shoes are in really pretty good condition. The stitching is wearing through a little bit here. Um, the soles are actually, you know, in pretty good condition. There's the right shoe. Usually, uh, I think the left shoe usually wears out a little faster. There's some wear on the soles and you know, on the tips of the toes, but not bad at all. And I wasn't sure if these heels were original, so I did some digging on style form, and I found some 1960s. See, there's the later logo that they changed to, and there's an original Allen Edmonds heel, the very, very same design with that metal, round metal cleat in it. So I believe that is, um, you know, an original heel. And uh, the nailless. So let me go back to that. So it says nailless in here, you know, and that's why I was looking at these. Well, it wouldn't say nailless heel, and then have nails in the heel, I guess. So I'm not sure. Uh, what exactly that refers to. Um, I've seen um, early, or I would say um, early 1970s, uh, um, maybe late 60s, no, more like late 1960s shoes, uh, mid 1960s shoes that say Ostendo cushioned heel. And uh, my understanding is this label, the uh, nailless heel, uh, preceded the Ostendo moniker. So, pretty cool. A little piece of Americana history. Um, check out the 360 degree Goodyear Welting, and here's kind of something neat. They took a lot of care on these shoes. You could kind of see where the welt actually starts and stops is right there. Might be a little bit too much light. My fingers out of the way a little bit. They did a very good job where they kind of skived and overlapped it, you know, but it does have that storm welt on there, and you can see there's a little bit of beveling on the top. If you can catch that in the light. All right. I'll polish these things up too, okay? Um, I won't do a whole video on the polishing. I'll just polish them up and maybe show you. Um, unfortunately, there is some damage to them. Right here you can see the lining has separated a little bit in a few inch section here. And there's a little bit of tearing right there in the lining. So, the, you know, the leather's just gotten dry. The other one here is not in bad shape though. A lot of these nicks and stuff will get covered up with a polish, you know. Can't really do much about the inner lining, but anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so you don't often, you know, get to find stuff like this that's, uh, you know, uh, 55, you know, to 60 years old. Um, I've never walked in a shoe with a metal cleat, and I've been really curious. And and like I said, these fit me. So I did take a few steps in these things, and I purposely, um, I purposely wanted to simulate if I was going to, you know, hit the heel just right where you walk on that cleat, um, because I've heard them referred to as suicide heels, and people tell me it's worse, uh, either like on smooth surfaces like marble or when the pavement's wet. So I walked around in my laundry room because right now it's late at night and it's dark outside. And um, I purposely tried to hit that cleat on the smooth concrete. And I'll show you the result here, okay? 
So I tried walking around on them a few steps. Um, I, I guess I'll put it this way. I don't think there's any real good purpose to have those metal cleats on heels other than the historical significance of them. But as far as actual practical purpose, um, I don't think it's worth it. I'd much rather put heel tacks on the, you know, the plastic, um, you know, heel tacks on and then change them. So um, anyway, if they're shoes you're actually going to wear, I'd recommend not having them. So here they are finished up. Uh, first, I washed them with saddle soap. And uh, after saddle soaping and wiping them off, then I nourished them with a Tanner's Blend, which is a lanolin-based uh, moisturizer that is produced by Ashland Leather Company. Um, and the people that produce it actually uh, work at Horween Leather Company, and it's what they use at Horween Leather Company, one of the United States' premier tanneries. Uh, then I polished them with black uh, paste polish and dyed the edges of the soles and the heels. Look pretty good, don't they? Still see that mark there. Not perfect. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for watching. God bless, have a great day. Check out my channel, subscribe if you'd like. I have a lot of other videos, mainly shoe um, and shoe accessory related kind of things. I'll talk to you guys later.